20 terabytes, tw like 20 TB. Let's think about that. That's enormous. Just to put that into perspective, that is 803 days of audio. That's one length of audio, 803 days long using standard WAV file. If you want, you could store 5,000 90-minute movies in HD. You could store 5 million 12.8 megapixel photos, 130 million office docs, and you know what? You could store all 10,481 episodes of Coronation Street and 6,368 episodes of EastEnders. That's all of EastEnders and all of Coronation Street, all on one drive, and then you could throw it in the bloody river. That is right, 20 TBs are right there on the cusp. We've been talking about them for the better part of a year, year and a half. And finally, it looks like they're materialising right there at the end of 2021. We're looking at the Seagate Ironwolf Pro NAS series of hard drives and the Exos series, that great enterprise end. Now, obviously, these are 14 TB drives. These are not 20 TB drives. I hope to have some of them here in the studio for you for a review when they do finally land. But I want to talk a lot about their specifications because although I've referred to them in previous videos, like when we went through some of the Seagate roadmap stuff on their road to 50 and 100 TB, as well as when we were talking about a heat or energy assisted hard drive uh, magnetic recording, now we can actually talk a lot more precisely about these drives in today's video. So first off, let's focus on the Ironwolf one. Let's focus a lot more on the NAS, the Ironwolf Pro drive. It's a SATA-based hard drive here at 20 terabytes, uh, taking advantage of CMR, uh, luckily there. So again, they've made it abundantly clear, unsurprisingly, in a lot of their press materials see out over the last year, year and a half, making it abundantly clear that they've got nothing to do with any of that shingled stuff before. But of course, this is taking things to a whole new level. Uh, this Pro Series drive, means that it's going to support up to 24 base system so again your rack mounts and stuff like that doesn't preclude you utilizing a pro series drive in a desktop model there but let's be realistic that is tremendous overkill and i know seagate restructured a lot of their portfolio um earlier in 2020 there when they kind of reshifted the balance there and about the 8 to 10 tb model there we saw a lot of those lower capacities um, kind of exclusively uh, for a lot of the part there are two non-pro and then all the bigger capacities particularly the higher teens all featuring just in pro models so again a lot of you are probably gonna have to look at a pro drive like this if you do want to take advantage of 10 and 12 tb or higher there is some wiggle room there in the middle of the portfolios um, it's helium sealed of course and a lot of the modern drives are so it's unsurprising that that is the case with a 300 terabyte workload on this drive as well so again we've seen that before with the difference between pro and ent class drives there um, with a reported 285 megabytes per second sequential read there at maximum transfer there's not too much going on telling us about right there it should be okay um and this drive of course is 7200 rpm with 256 megabytes of cache on board um again it is uh, a pro series iron wolf drive there so it's got that rescue recovery service three years of data recovery services built in and the five years as well but again as good as this is going to be for NAS drives, buyers, bear in mind this ain't going to be the quietest drive. When we talked about Pro Series drives here on the channel before, this is not going to be an exception to that. We haven't got full confirmation of pricing either, but it's going to be a, you know, a click hum were heavy drive. But of course, these are designed for systems where you wouldn't even hear that drive over immense fans and active calling systems there. Now, Stepping slightly away from the NAS drive there, we can look at the Enterprise class drive. We've already talked in the past about the difference between Iron Wolf and Exos, or indeed Pro versus Enterprise, and a lot of that comes down to two words, uh, durability and sustained uh, performance there. So, um, now, in the case of the Exos series there, it is worth highlighting that although we're talking about 20TB here in the video, this isn't technically new tech. 20TB drives, and indeed a lot of this technology behind it has been implemented at the highest tiers already. A lot of server farm level stuff, and of course, the big guys, your Amazons, your Googles, your Facebooks, that sort of thing. This is just the first real steps that we're seeing that kind of, not so much the everyman, but certainly big businesses that don't live at that high kind of echelon there at the top are able to take advantage of this. And a lot of those users, as much as they're going to like the NAS series, they're looking data center. They're looking at multi hyperscale environments there. And that's where your enterprise, your Exos live. Now, 
arriving in both SATA and SAS interfaces there. There's uh, different, there's five different models actually in the X20 series. Um, and some of them arriving either with standard class build, some of them with self-encrypted drive technology behind them, and some of them with FIPS. Again, that government kind of federal level encryption there, which is kind of a must with a lot of this implementation there. Now again, helium sealed. Uh, there's no confirmation on the workload rating there, but generally we have found previously when comparing Pro and Exos drives, that the Exos series is generally almost double, normally sitting around the 550 um, annual workload there, terabytes, but again, we're still waiting for a bit of confirmation on that. 7200 RPM, both on the SAS and the SATA drive, as well as 256 megabytes of cache there. And again, the same reported read there at 285 megabytes per second reported maximum uh, read as uh, uh, read performance there and again that is sequential uh, and again we do get a performance for write as well at 272 megabytes per second sequential write and there are some other figures on the data sheets as well there's a whole article linked in the description where we talk a lot more about the utility of these drives and we talk a lot a bit there about some of the random access there as well there's none of that rescue service this is kind of out of the realms of that these are drives they're designed for a very frequent refresh of data there. So I think recovery would be slightly out of its depth in that world. But it does arrive with the five years of warranty there. And again, if you thought me talking about the uh, uh, Ironwolf Pro drive being noisy was one thing, Exos are a different world. I mean, earlier this year, I think right there at January, February, we did whole audio level tests. And again, because these drives are not going to be designed for you know your day-to-day -day, like NAS on the table use they're gonna be noisy because the systems they're in are ungodly noisy and these are drives that are designed to get to their highest performance as quick as possible it's about low low latency okay and these are two drives that are very much focused on that now when are we going to see them again as mentioned we're right on the cusp we've been talking about 20 tb drives being on the horizon for quite a while there and that's because although we've known they're out in the world we've been waiting for them to be actually purchasable any kind of stockist there but this is looking increasingly uh, going by not only Seagate's roadmap and frankly the impressive way they've stuck to a lot of their commitments given things like Chia and the pandemic and hardware shortages and semiconductor shortages and stuff like that but it looks like end of 2021 uh, maybe with full stock arriving, if not globally, then at least in the channel here sometime in January. But we'll have to wait and see on that one. I will be updating the article linked in the description over to NAS Compares there, so do check that out. And of course, this is a subject that we're going to be talking about quite a lot, because 20TB is a hell of a milestone there. We've been talking a lot about hard drive development and growth, and myself and nearly the web guy would make videos here where we would debate the ut um, the utility of overall capacity versus speed. I think if there's one big thing we've seen, it's been this race to the petabytes. It's been this idea that despite performance of SSDs and indeed the affordability of SSDs getting better and better, hard drives have still got a very big place in the world right now. And a lot of it is because you just can't compete with the level of capacity they offer to end users while still providing durability, endurance, and sustained performance in their lifetime, as well as archiving, of course. But I've done, I've done a whole video on this about why SSDs still exist, should be linked in the description. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe, and take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares, linked in the description. Genuinely free, man by two humans, me and Eddie the web guy, will answer all your queries. It might take us an extra day or two, because we've got lives, but we answer everyone. I will see you next time.